Hey. Hey. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. You know, good. So Massachusetts weather. <laughs> okay. So you're at home? Yeah, I'm at home. I'm uh, quarantining in Massachusetts. Okay. How's the whole quarantine thing going for you? It's different. You know, it's definitely... Uh, Actually, I'm enjoying it now, obviously, because it's been so long now. So you learn to adapt and, like, you know, get used to certain things. So it's actually cool for me. I released an album, obviously, in quarantine, and mm. that was really different. Um, it's not your standard album release, you know. But it's quarantine has taught me a lot. Like, it's definitely allowed me to be more creative and tap into, you know, a more deeper connection with my fans because all we're doing now you know all of us i feel like is going live and like you know really connecting on a different level because we have so much time you know we have ample right. time to do those usually i'm traveling and traveling and i'm everywhere mm -hmm. you know at this time so it's been cool so clearly music is is a passion of yours right have, have mm -hmm. you in the quarantine have you like picked up anything else anything new that really was like in the back of your brain but now you're, you know. Yeah, actually, uh, I've been teaching myself how to do the splits. <laughs> 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 so, you know, I had this, like, I've loved, like, gymnastics and cheerleading for so long. Like, I used to be a cheerleader in high school. Um, I loved it. Like, that was, like, a secret, quote, unquote, passion of mine. And even, I never did, like, gymnastics. My mom put me in, like, ballet and stuff, but I always loved, like, gymnastics. So I'm like, you know what? I'm about to get flexible. And during quarantine, <laughs> I've been teaching myself how to, like, you know, do the splits. That's, like, one of my goals. So I'm almost there. So don't ask me to do it right now because I haven't learned yet. But okay. I'm almost there. So definitely get that. <laughs> okay. Maybe you can put it in the story or something. Put it on the IG story once you perfect it. You know what I mean? Just Hell, I'm about to. I'm about to go live because, look, me learning how to do that is going to be such a goal checked off. You know, so I definitely will. I'll go live. Maybe even do it on stage. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, once we get back to that. So, yeah, so you talked about just dropping an album. The project came out, like, last a week from a week ago, right? Yep, May 1st. So so it's – it or let me, let me ask you this. It's one of three, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, you so there's like gonna be a part two and a part three of this. Yep, there's three chapters. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Explain. Can you explain the like the thought process behind that? So, I really wanted to being as my first album. I really wanted to release it as like you know a whole. Like at first, I wasn't gonna do chapters, but. I thought about it and you know for me it's hard for me to digest the whole album you know what i'm saying like it's hard for me to listen to 15 to 18 songs and really dive into them you know for me i pick five to six songs and i put them things on free play like and i just rock with them you know what i mean so i felt like doing it in chapters was a different way to allow my fans to connect you know because it's like yo i'm not shoving so much mu music in your face where it's like you don't know what to focus on so I felt like I wanted to create a no skip six and doing it in chapters made more sense and gave you know people listening more time to really dive in and digest about you know the songs and learn them and feel what I'm saying and actually you know live with them and also you know Maxwell was the last to do that, and I just thought it was super dope. You know, we still waiting on chapter two, so <laughs> <For> I, just, <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was dope. It's very creative and it's just different. And also, to keep it real, like I hate microwavable music. I hate just you know sometimes we as artists we always looking for that hit. We're just putting out so much music, so much music, and looking for that you know hit to pop off. But it's like it's so much more than that you know music matters it's not just about the hit for me and it's like i really wanted to connect with my fans differently okay that's dope that's a that's a dope thought process behind like because how we listen to music now because i kind of feel the same way it's like i don't really want to sit through you know all respect to chris brown i don't want to sit through a 40, right. song, 40 song album you know what mm. i mean but and putting them out in chunks yeah i mean that makes perfect sense because then 
I feel like because normally what happens is is you drop an album, right? And then all of a sudden people are into it that weekend, and then it's like, all right, on to the next, right? Yeah, it's like you know exactly. People just want more and more. So also this creates a very you know like it creates a hype. You know, people finna be waiting for the chapter two and chapter three. So definitely. So um, we talked. You, you kind of mentioned um, microwavable music and how you're not really into that and. One thing that I really wanted to ask you, like as an R and B performer, like can can you explain what you think, where you think R and B is right at right now? Like, what's the state of R and B? I think it's a, at a twenty twenty state. <laughs> I feel like you know we'll never get Mary J. Black back. We'll never get Brandy back. We'll never we'll never experience Jodeci again. You know, like. R&B was R&B, SWV. Like, all those artists we listened to growing up, we'll never get that back again. So I feel like we'll never relive that 90s era or in, you know, in even the 2000s era. You know, music is constantly changing. And 2020, you know, it's like that's what our R&B is today. And honestly, for me, it, it kind of sucks to think about it in a way like that because it's like yo r&b back then was timeless you know and i'm not saying that you know music today can't be timeless you know what i mean because it can but it'll never be that and i feel like that's like self-explanatory like it'll never be that and you know it's just like r&b today is different and i love it i'm a part of it you know what i mean i'm a part of that generation creating new you know r&b but it's like I always try to pay homage to the greats that I've listened to. You know what I mean? I sample certain things, and it's just like I try to keep that R&B that I grew up listening to very, you know, vibrant in my music that I create because that's the R&B that I know. I don't know nothing else. You know what I mean? So one of your mentors is is one of these legendary artists from from the '90s, Rafael Sadiq. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now you guys, you guys have a professional relationship. Well, I'm I'm curious as a music fan because I love Tony Tony Tony. I love Lucy Pearl. Mm -hmm. Are you ever gonna make music with him? Oh yeah, we actually have a song together. Um, it's on my Ready to Love EP, okay. and it's called All About You. We did that song together, and um, yeah, that's my big bro. Like, you know, he's always been such a a huge force like in my career. So it's like he's always been present and he's currently present so definitely we i mean i'll be performing with him on stage like we definitely yeah and he's always a part of the creative process when i put out music like he was a part of my album you know the whole creative process so definitely he's he's always you know he's always in the mix you know so 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 i feel like it, that that's kind of like the bridge right like that's carrying it on from like the 90s to now like in, in yeah. that sense you kind of keeping the legacy alive i think that's dope Thank you. So, uh, your 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 IG bio mm -hmm. says mini professional mini bike racer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you explain that to me? Yeah, I love mini bikes. I think it's super fire. I like riding them. Um, you know, IG's always like you gotta say some cool shit, and that's just one of my the cool shit that I do. I ride <laughs> I ride mini bikes. I should probably start <laughs> posting more of it. You know, I haven't been outside lately, but as the weather gets nice, I'll definitely start posting. And also, I started taking up rollerblading. I like things. Like, I like riding things. Like, I love motorcycles. I like mini bikes. I love rollerblades. So, yeah. It's just one of my many things that I like to do outside. <laughs> so, sp speaking of, of your IG, um, I, I was just cruising through it, right? And I want to show you something. And I want to... I wanna, um... If you can explain this picture, I don't know if you've seen like hot ones or whatever, how he has them explain the picture, but tell me what's going on in this pic. Cause I mean, your caption says one thing, but I need to know exactly what was going on. Oh, that was actually during a photo shoot I was doing in Cali. And that guy right over there on the side is, um, he was a part of my styling process. He's a part of my label. Shout out Dom. <laughs> But he's yeah, I was just I just snapped the pic. I was in styling, so they were 
actually dressing me okay. up, putting different shoes on me. And <laughs> I just decided to snap a pic. It was actually, we did a photo shoot in somebody's uh, house. It was an Airbnb we rented. It was super fire. And yeah, that's it. I was just having a pic. <laughs> okay, because it, it just looks like there's so much going on here. Like there's that piece of piece of clothing on the floor in front. You guys got the whole bed laid up. Like there's stuff over there. You know what I mean? I was just like, there's got to be something else behind this. Oh, yeah. No, it was a photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a photo laughs> <shoot. laughs> okay <laughs> that's super dope um mm -hmm. let me see let me see what else. i had I have other stuff to talk to you about okay so being out yeah you you mentioned that the weather in massachusetts is weird like what's what's going on over there it's like i don't know it's just like one day it's hella hot like it's so hot and i'll be out i love the sun i love the beach i love just being outside so it, it'll, it'll feel like that one day and then it'll rain the next day and it's like damn mood kill like the weather is just consistent like honestly a few weeks ago it was snowing and i'm like yo this is getting old <laughs> it made me realize how much <laughs> i hate four seasons the only reason why i like you know having four seasons it was cool because i love fall i think it's beautiful right but i've now realized i only think snow is cute during christmas time for like the first two seconds and then I'm over it. Like, I love the sun. I'd rather be in Miami and in a condo on the beach. That's where I want to be. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Okay. So, so um, yeah, Massachusetts weather is kind of weird. Yeah. I, I think I think everybody, uh, every state kind of has their own little weirdness. Like, here, yeah, it snowed, like, I don't know, a couple few weeks ago. And now that they're like, it might snow this weekend. And, yeah, it's weird. So, yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, I'm over it. No.